What's up guys, we are back with another video taking a look at the CMU Vulcan backend and this one is going to be a little bit special and one that I know for a fact that a lot of this emulators users have been looking forward to for a long long time. So in this video I am going to be showing off the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild now running at a locked 60 frames per second absolutely everywhere in the game world running on an AMD GPU. This kind of performance is made possible by the CMU 1.16.0 work in progress 7 release which has itself introduced a whole host of upgrades for both Intel, AMD and Nvidia GPU users. Work in progress 7 also introduced a ton of other fixes for other games which I tested in my previous video so if you haven't checked that out already I'll have it linked down in the description of this one. That video tested out all of the most popular games that you guys requested across my previous Vulcan videos, so as I said, if you haven't looked at that video, you should definitely check it out. So back to the topic of this one, as you can see right here on the Great Plateau, on my RX 580 8GB which I recently upgraded to only 3 days ago, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is now attaining a perfectly locked 60 frames per second at all times in every single location in the game world. Jumping across the Hateno village, again 60 frames per second and for anybody who previously used an AMD GPU on the older OpenGL backend, you were probably more used to around 15 or 20 frames per second. I myself on my 8700K CPU would only get about 25 frames per second, so this jump up to 60 is absolutely astonishing. Now in the top left hand corner of this video you are going to notice we are going to be basically constantly compiling shaders. This is because in this work in progress 7 version we still don't have a shader cache. So this means that every time you load up the game you are going to have to rebuild your shaders from scratch. Thankfully due to the optimized state that Vulkan is currently in at least in relation to compiling its shaders this doesn't really seem to be too much of a problem but if you do notice our frame rate drop down from 60 this shader compilation is exactly the reason for that. This video is going to serve as a benchmark to show off just how performant this Vulkan backend is and to do this I am going to be testing the performance in all of the most performance demanding areas in the game. We started things off on the Great Plateau, then we moved on to Hateno Village and we are currently looking at our performance in Hateno Forest. So it's not just performance that has improved in this work in progress 7 version, they also introduced a lot of crash fixes especially so for Breath of the Wild on AMD GPUs. There were 3 major crashes which I mentioned in my last Vulcan preview of work in progress 5, one was cutting down trees, the second was doing a sword smash and the third was killing any of the smaller ancient guardians inside of shrines. Thankfully in this new release these issues are now all completely fixed meaning that for the most part Zelda Breath of the Wild is now fully playable on AMD and Nvidia GPUs on the Vulkan backend. Now I know that there are some instances of the game not booting yet, for example on any Intel iGPUs Breath of the Wild doesn't boot at all, this is because the Intel Vulkan driver is missing some critical instructions and I also know that some AMD Vega GPUs are not currently booting the game, again this is apparently due to a driver issue on AMD's side. Again as far as I know CMU's developers are going to be able to implement a workaround for that just as I hope they are going to be able to fix that weird blue hue issue that happens on AMD GPUs when you're either dropping from a height or climbing a wall. On top of this there are still many issues for all GPU vendors like for example you're going to see throughout this video there are still lots of weird square shadow issues in Breath of the Wild similarly to what you will see in Mario Kart 8, Splatoon and also Super Smash Bros. Regardless of any of those issues though it's absolutely outstanding to see the performance benefits and gains that AMD GPU users are getting right now and are going to be getting in the future once all of this Vulcan stuff gets released to the public. Now obviously if you are an AMD GPU user and want access to Vulkan right now and the performance benefits you can get by using it, you can simply just support CMU on their Patreon and gain access to this exact build I'm using right now and every single build that comes after it. In my honest opinion the CMU dev team 100% deserves your support, they have done an absolutely amazing job in implementing Vulkan for their emulator. 
And if you do want to support, I will leave a link to CMU's Patreon down in this video's description. So now that we've taken a look at the Great Plateau, Hateno, the Hateno Ruins, and now Kakariko Village, with all of these areas maintaining 60 frames per second after we've compiled our shaders, let's move on to our next two areas, the Lost Woods and the Korok Forest. Paired with all the areas we've already looked at, Lost Woods and Korok are also some very demanding areas in Breath of the Wild, both on the Nintendo Wii U and the Switch. Korok Forest is to this day used as an area for performance testing when overclocking the Switch, so it's definitely one area that is very heavy for performance. However, as you can see, when approaching the Korok Forest, after we have compiled our shaders in the top left hand corner on my RX 580, I am able to maintain 60 frames per second locked absolutely no problem. Just as I say that, I dropped down to 41 FPS, but again, you can see in the top left hand corner, this was simply due to shader cache compilation. So there we have it, two more areas that are perfectly locked at 60 frames per second on the Vulcan backend. Let's move on to our next area, the Azora's Domain. This location is probably one of the lighter heavy areas I guess you could say in the game. It does give much higher frame rates than other towns like Hateno or Kakariko and it has a much lower performance than areas like Central Hyrule or pretty much anywhere else out in the open world. However, as with everywhere else we've taken a look at, once we've compiled our shaders, this area is also a perfectly locked 60 frames per second on this RX 580. This performance is well over double the performance I would be getting on OpenGL on this very same build, so this is a huge, huge improvement. For now, let's move away from Zora's Domain and onto another area I have tested extensively in videos in the past. This is Lurlin Village on the southeast coast of Hyrule. Lurlin is actually one of my favourite areas in the entirety of Breath of the Wild. One, because it has really cool and chill music, especially at night time. And two, because it's a really nice blend of open world and kind of a town area. Also, it came to light recently that apparently this entire village was modeled around Outset Island, which is the very first area from The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, which is pretty cool, and if you actually look for the similarities, there are actually quite a few there. Now again, moving back to our performance overview, you can see that as with everywhere else we've looked at in this video, Lurlin is now also running at a perfectly locked 60 frames per second on AMD. Now we can't visit Lurlin Village without pulling off the transparent water glitch, so to do it we have to go under this little boardwalk, look out towards the sea, pull out our scope, close the scope, and there you go. You can see we have our transparent water bug, which allows us to see in full effect all of the glory of the underwater area here at Lurlin Village. So anyway, let's get back on topic performance and move on to our next testing area, Hyrule Castle Ruins. By a fairly large performance margin, this area is the most demanding place in the entirety of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, especially when all of the roaming and flying guardians are present and spawned. Once you kill them all, performance does tend to jump up by about 10 or 15 frames per second, but right now, in the situation we are looking at, it is in its worst possible performance state. Even in this worst case scenario though, we are still getting a locked 60 frames per second, a fairly massive achievement for a very heavy performance area like this. It's pretty mental to think that only 5 weeks ago, AMD GPU users were only able to get around 20 frames per second in this area, and I'm talking 20 frames per second when using an 8700K. This is exactly the kind of performance I was seeing only a few weeks ago, and it's absolutely mind-blowing to think that right now, this game is running at 60 frames per second locked on an AMD GPU that cost me under 120 euros. Now, obviously I'm not saying that everyone's going to be able to buy GPUs for this cheap. I myself basically always buy my GPUs secondhand as I find that that gives me the best value for money on these kind of components. And of course, I know that availability of decent and quality secondhand parts is always going to vary from area to area and region to region. Aside from this fact, I think it's very impressive that we are able to achieve a locked 60 frames per second on a GPU that cost me 104 euros. And given the fact that Vulcan is only just now entering its fifth week of public development, I can only imagine the kind of performance we're going to get once it's finished. 
So that's going to be it for my benchmarking of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild on Vulcan Work in Progress 7. And if you want to check out the other compatibility and performance testing I did for games like Mario Kart, Smash Bros, Tekken, Splatoon and tons of other games, I'll link that video down in the description of this one. As always, if there are any other games you would like to see me test for performance and compatibility, either on AMD, Nvidia, or Intel GPUs, leave them down below this video in a comment, and if I have access to that game, I will test it out for you absolutely no problem at all. Before I go, I want to give another massive thank you to all of my supporters over on Patreon.com. You guys are absolutely awesome, helping me to pay for things like electricity bills, water bills, power bills, games for testing, and absolutely everything else required for the day-to-day -day running of of a YouTube channel. Again, as I always say, pledges and donations are not required at all to get any help from me here on YouTube or over on my Discord server, but to all past, present and future supporters, thank you guys very, very much. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting the like button down below, and if you want to see future videos from me, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon if you want to get notified as soon as I make a new upload. Once again guys, thank you very much for watching, have a great day and I will see you in the next one.